because I I'm a, I'm a, I'm a magician. Close up magician since uh, a decade ago. Yeah. So I hope to maybe to be a full time magician to earn income. So yeah, I think that's my my vision uh, in three years time. Uh, from Wonderful. Will you all support him along his journey? Yes. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Important thing is to plug into a network like this. Yes, thank you. Where they applaud you everywhere. <laughs> right? Do you, do you find thousand five, huh? Yeah. Do you think it's easier to run if thousand five uh, along the whole thousand five hundred meters uh, you have people applauding you? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Definitely, right? Definitely. Rather than Bolang, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. While you are running, people are digging nose. No? Yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. this is what is important, yeah? yeah so yeah. speak about your vision, yes. pronounce it, claim it. Yes. Okay? Yes. At least this table will cheer you on. <laughs> yeah, How about that? Yeah. You, you must ask them now, yeah? Will you cheer me on? Yeah, yeah will you cheer me on? Yeah! Okay? Yeah. Ask and you will always receive. Well done, guys! Yeah, Woo. Thank you. Okay. Huh? So your magician entrepreneur journey, uh, this is something that we are going to talk about today. Hopefully it will help you out. Okay? Pass your mic over to... Oh, Batman. Batman is back. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, come, come. Come to the, the stage. is yours, Damien. Yes. <laughs> 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 All right, ladies and gentlemen, Damien. Okay, uh, so three years from now, I'll be, I've graduated from uni. So I have basically three things. Uh, one is work, knowledge, and wealth. So for work, definitely I want to at least find a good job. And um, okay, if I've not decided to become an entrepreneur by then, hopefully I have uh, at least 10x my knowledge, 100x my knowledge. I at least want to learn and keep learning new things as I go along. And the last thing is wealth, uh, which is not necessarily for me, but for my parents, because I really want to take care of them. And I really want to bring them on a, a, a holiday, because I really think that they deserve time off. You know. Can I? Can we get a little bit deeper into it? Yeah, uh, take out your mask so that they can see. You know, you talk about parent and your tears come out, then people can see you. So. <laughs> I, I, I don't cry. Can, can you can you tell me about your parents? I mean, what uh, are they working hard to support you and your family, uh, or yeah, what? So what is the situation? Yeah, uh, my my parents uh, they married quite late. Uh, so now my father is like sixty five already. Ah. yeah. Okay. I'm the youngest lah. So okay. I, um, and then my family is not exactly very, uh, very strongly united. Uh, that's, that's how I'll put it. Mm. So I want to at least be there for my, my parents. Uh, as okay. They grow so older. emotionally yeah. to, to support them. Yeah. Correct. How about um, finance wise? Are they okay? Are uh, they struggling to support you and your sibling? Finance wise, they are doing okay. They're doing okay. okay. Uh, but um, my my dad has like a, has health issues already. Uh, so it's like a spinal mm. thing, and I'm I'm worried that as he grows older and then he has to go for more treatments or he has to pay a lot more. Then eventually there's there's nothing left, you know. Yeah. That's hopefully I can earn something to support them. Then. Uh, then they don't have to worry about it, <laughs> about finances. Uh. How, how are you? I'm 22 this year. 22. Who won this son? <laughs> <laughs> You're a lot of godmother and godfather here. <laughs> yeah. Now this this is something that is really, I would say, uh, not 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 very often you see in a 22 year old. Yeah. Yeah, 22 years, carefree, just want me, 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 my success, my wealth, my, my whatever, my happiness, uh, buy my own stuff and all that, right? So I think you have got that in you and allow that to fuel your, your inspiration, motivations, 
you know, going forward, come what may. The road ahead will always have ups and downs. Actually, in my life, I realize that the downs are not really downs. The downs uh, contrast and make your up more up. Okay, so if you can see that way, then nothing can be can be an obstacle to you. Yeah. Good, bad man. <laughs> yeah. I know that you have not decided on entrepreneurship and I don't think you need to decide immediately, just like you wouldn't be able to decide what job you're gonna go in anyway. Yeah. But I like the idea of you wanting ten X or hundred X. I mean you want to you want to not so much of earning ten X earning a hundred times more, but upskilling yourself a hundred times more. Okay. Enlarge your ability to think and visions and all the skills that we are going to talk about today. Okay? okay. So the way that you're going to acquire all this 10x, 100x, if I may have one thing that I would like you to remember for the rest of the day as you go through all the rest of the program, will be put them into experience. You can never really intellectualize success in life. Intellectualize enough, you get to experientially create the success. So intellectualizations and experiential are two parts of the two two sides of the coin that makes the coin a coin. Okay? okay. Right. Thank wow, thank you. Good to yeah, why your hands so cold? Yeah. Batman supposed to be. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow, give us everybody a round of applause again. Yeah. As we go along, I'm, I'm sure there will be more opportunity to share. Okay. Now, I just want to say this about visioning. It's so important. It is so important. Whether you want an entrepreneur success, whether you want to be a successful magician that will earn a living, whether you want to run a 1,500 meter as a champion, yeah, it all begins with here. You want to be a a successful cafe owner, you want to be a successful network marketer, you want to be a successful whatever blank, successful son in that sense, you know, of what your success means to you. It all begins with all the words that is toiling around inside here, the pictures that is toiling around inside here. Okay? So be vivid in your visioning. Extremely vivid. The more vivid you can be, you can even see a picture on a magazine or see a, 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 a movie in a, in, a, in, a, in a Netflix or whatever and it, it, it captures the image, it captures the movement, it captures the idea and it becomes part of yours. Okay? And you hold it dearly enough, say it. So my habit is now like that. When I was in uh, 2007, I was in Chiang Rai. I befriended this farmer. And I was curious. I mean, as an entrepreneur, I'm, I, I, curiosity is another thing. Like, uh. So I was curious. I say, I've been eating rice for 40 over years. I, I actually have no idea how rice came about. So I asked that guy, I said, when do you plant the rice? He said, June, July period. Hey. June, July, I vision. June, July, the next year, what will it be? Then I turn to my wife, hey, school holiday. Le. I said, when do you harvest the rice? Is that once or twice a year or whatever? Say on November, October, November. I turn to my wife, hey, holiday. Le. So I imagine, wow, oh, I think my family could go there, get into the paddy field, and experience, not intellectualize. Intellectualized, I can go to the website and find out all about rice. But I experience totally different dimensions of richness, right? So in 2008, I returned there. No, 2007. Yeah, 2008, I returned there as a family. June, we went in, we plant rice. In November, we harvest rice. And then my girl said to me, my girl was 10 years old then. Robin said to me, Daddy, now I understand why you say rice is so precious, we should not waste rice. I say, oh, okay. Oh, finally you discover something of your own. Huh? I say, you tell me, what? Guess what she say? Her answer shocked me. She say, 
because there's love in the rice. I say, wow, wow, you more sweet. <laughs> wow, got ink there. <laughs> yeah, wow, that one I also cannot say that. Yeah? So why, why do you say there's love in the rice? I don't understand. Yeah? You know, in ten year old, speak the truth. Yeah, you agree? How many of you are ten year old? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, and she said because. There's so much love. Love from the Mother Earth. Love from the Sun. Love from all the things that we don't like, like the worms. Not like the, because when we go in, you know, there's worms, there's, there's all those. Uh, is it love from Father Gun? Father Gun is an old farmer who taught us how to farm. Every sweat of the, of the farmer. Then I knew there's something that she has discovered that, she will, that you will stay on for the rest of her life. You agree? Because it's something that you cannot take away from. And I thought to myself, I said that, wow, what if other kids and other families could experience this aha moment? And I start to visualize that night. I visualize, I vision, okay? that what if I could co-create something with this farmer and made it into an ecotourism that will enable other Singapore families to go and experience this reckoning, this awakening, this aha moment for themselves. And the next morning, I to the, to the rice farmer. Lah. His name is Kit, K-I-T-T. I say, Kit, how do you like to earn an extra source of income from hosting family like us. So I painted the whole picture. I painted the whole pictures and I say, you know, how I can go and do marketing in Singapore. You can receive them from the airport here, bring them here day one, you irrigation, day two, you show this, day three, you level the field, day four, whatever, day five. The whole movie is in my head together with him. With him. And then, we high five each other. We drove to the town center because there you have got internet. I lock on. I bought the name, the domain name, tigerlandricefarm.com. That's it. It started there and then until today. So business, same. Charity project, same. Your life, how you want to be the kind of son that you want to be in your family, same. Everything starts with a clear vision inside. And then you say it out. After you have said enough, don't NATO. NATO what? NATO is talk. No action, talk only. Okay? See, NATO, 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 then wars continue. <laughs> okay? So in our life, don't NATO in that sense. Yeah? So get into the action. The, in fact, the best way to get into the action is when you have that excitement. That emotionally charged excitement, you know, you get poured in, you do action that really will bring result. So what, what kind of action? How do you do mong cha cha, kam kam chang? Just anyhow langa or the second skill. Set goals and make plans. This is a skill. And I realized in my journey as an artist, the more I'm able to do this, the, or rather, the more I practice this, the better I get. Now, that is the definition of skills. So, like, perseverance is not something like a skill. It's more a core value in you. But making plans, setting goals and making plans is a skill. Because the more you do it, the better you get it. The better you get it, the better you get at it. So, once upon a time, when I do, when I set goals and make plans, it took me a while. Because you are not quite sure, right? You have not done it in enough time. You were kind of like tikam tikam, you know, maybe work, maybe not work, right? But nowadays, whenever I fly into Africa, talking about my social entrepreneurship aspect now, right? I could walk around a town. I remember in 2011, I was in uh, Lamu, it's an island where there was some situation with, uh, with, uh, with uh, environmental concern there. I didn't, quite, I didn't understand the issue. My friends who hosted me there in Lamu brought me around to speak to, we spoke to a few people, a few different 
groups of champions and people. And I, I began to appreciate the situation on the ground. It took me three days. I could set very clear goal and make very simple plan, very pragmatic plan. And within a week, we had all the donkeys on the island carrying a safe lamu coconut um, art piece that was made by thousands of students that, that are from three schools. So all these were manifested within a week. So the question is that, what actually made that happen? Was it because of me? No. I'm, I'm a Singaporean who landed in Lamu. Nobody knows me there. But it was the idea. It was the idea about, hey, students, I say to them, do you want to save Lamu? Why are all these old men, old lady here saving Lamu? Yes, your intention is very good. But do you see to... to, to do, do you live long enough to really see the, the kind of things that you want? Why are you not engaging the students, which is a younger generation, younger generation, right? Who has a bigger stake in the Lamu, environmental protection, because they are going to stay their life here. So we swing the entire thing and we went into school. And I gave talks to the kids and I say that, hey, look, I'm not from here. But I see that, you know, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. You want to do something about it? All the kids say yes. Okay, come. Since you guys uh, can't do much in terms of money or whatever not, you do an art piece. So we use coconut husk, which is free. Coconut, okay, the coconut, we cut it into half. And they paint the word safe Lamu. And to get the paint, I need to buy, right? Of course, I can come up with the money and buy. But I didn't. I went into a paint shop and I said, can I speak to the owner? Oh, you are the owner. Do you know about this problem that is confronting Lamu now in your island? Oh, of course he knows, right? Then do you know that you can do something about it? Then we, I talk about how we're going to go to the students and the duties and that. And then he turned out and says that, Take the pain, whatever pain you want, you take. So what I'm trying to say is that visions governize people, governize effort, governize human resources of all kinds, money also. And then we turn it into a reality, all, in, all done in one week. So in your entrepreneurial journey, you've got to take this story into even a deeper, because it's not a one-week project. It's going to be a 10-year project. It's going to be a 20-year uh, uh, business that you're going to build up. So the more vivid imagination you have, then you can imagine what kind of goals you've got to put, make, make possible, step by step by step by step. Okay? And then you come up with a plan. The difference between goals and plan is this. Goals is what? Goals is like this rock climber staring at the thing and say, I want to get up there. I want to get up to this point here. Okay, this red border here on the right on top. Okay, she's staring at the red border on top. So the ghost is where you want to get to. But the plans is how you're going to get there. Do you need an instructor to give you some instruction on how to climb? Which hole to get to before you get up to the top? What skill you need to acquire? What advice you need to get from some mentors around you? Or do you need somebody to come, a bad man to come and then push your ass up higher? <laughs> okay, whatever way that you're going to get up there, the hard plans of the house. And finally, whether you get up there or not, it depends on your what? Let's say together, your action. Right? Whether you actually do something about it. Or you just continue sitting down there and just looking at it and then just playing around around in your mind. Then you're just a daydreamer. Okay, so we are not daydreamer. Are you a daydreamer? Ask person next to you, are you a daydreamer? You can even be a bit of uh, uh, agitation and say, you look a little bit like a daydreamer. Are you a daydreamer? <laughs> okay, now let's get into a little bit of discussion here. Okay, about setting goals and making plans. You have your goals. Okay, 
we can help you with some plans, but you got to s 